When it comes to losing weight, one size does not fit all. There are different diets and types of exercise. Should you eat this food and avoid that food? What about medications and should you avoid certain supplements? What actually works? Hi, I'm Meg Farris, medical reporter for WWL-TV, and over the years we've been talking to doctors, nutritionists, fitness experts, and just regular people like you. And now we're going to show you some of those stories about what worked for them. Toward the end of his 12 years in the Louisiana legislature, Austin Badon says his weight crept up to 264 pounds. In politics, everybody wants to take you to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And then he went to the doctor and got dangerous health news. They said I was one notch away from being classified as diabetic. And what happened next changed his health, weight, family, and even his job. My blood pressure is at the level of a collegiate athlete. My knees feel great. I sleep better, my stamina, I get to run with my kid. Austin joined the YMCA Diabetes Prevention Program. After one year, at 52 years old, he's 52 pounds lighter. He feels so good, he applied to be the director of the YMCA off of Power Boulevard in Metairie and got the job. He works out every single day. Hey, guys. And every day walks around the corner to the Rouse's salad bar to follow the Mediterranean-style diet and portion control that the program taught him. A little roasted garlic. That way of eating rubbed off on his wife, Therese, who's now lost weight, and his six-year-old son, Aiden. He's sleeping better. Uh, his performance in school is, has increased. The YMCA Diabetes Prevention Program was studied nationwide and with LSU doctors in New Orleans and Baton Rouge, and its success is proven. There actually is no other intervention program that has been shown in randomized controlled trials to be this effective. It lowered the risk of developing diabetes by 58% overall. And in those over 60 years old, by 71%. Austin's waist went from a 44 to a 37. I'm being called skinny again, and I love it. Still waiting on you to come and work out. Now he's on a mission to convert others. If I could make somebody's life a little bit better if with their health issues, you know, that's, that's a good feeling. For Weight Loss Wednesday, I'm Meg Farris. For the leg and the thigh, yeah. At her House of Faith non-denominational ministry, prophetess Christiana Ford feeds the homeless every Monday. I'm feeding these people uh, soul food. It's say the best right, red beans and fried chicken in the city. After losing his church in Hurricane Katrina, Reverend Raymond Brown is there to help. This is the red beans. There's food to cook. What you see right now is um, a free clothes giveaway for the homeless. Donated clothes to hand out household. and souls like Steve's to be saved. I was running the streets real hard. Young yeah. brothers, I want y'all to put them guns down and pick them Bibles up for number one. Y'all is our future. So we just say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for this. And while Reverend Brown is there to help, he won't be eating the food he prepares. Well, I don't eat soul food anymore. I don't eat sweets no more. I don't eat candy no more. I don't drink cold drinks no more. I just drink water. I haven't drunk. I don't even drink orange juice. You see, not long ago, Reverend Brown weighed 400 pounds. His waist was 58 inches. It's just the culture of the, of the community, the food culture. There's nothing, there's, they don't teach you nutritious food. So I ate the, the, the chicken, the Popeyes, and the McDonald's and all that, not knowing it was destroying my insides and that it was going to catch up with me. And it caught up with him in a very dangerous way. Type 2 diabetes was destroying his kidneys. Well, they asked me to go on to dialysis. Yeah, my doctor asked me to go on dialysis. And I decided that, you know what, I can't go on dialysis. It scared you? Yeah. This is the food that I eat every day. So five years ago, he shed 65 pounds by cutting out the type of food that sends a diabetic's insulin soaring, causing extra fat storage in the midsection. I stopped eating pastry completely. No donuts. Then by a chance meeting one day in 2017, Reverend Brown saw me in a park and made a promise to me that one day he'd be on Weight Loss Wednesday. You was the epitome 
of health. And when I saw you, all I could see is a, a woman that controlling her weight. And you looked so good, and I say, wow, I would love to be like that. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes. We all struggle. <laughs> <laughs> but that promise really was a commitment to his health, future, and life. I was so big, I used to just, like, I can be walking and pass out and wake up. That's how the weight was so much. Financial constraints meant that he had to lose weight on his own. He used uh, uh, Dr. Google and avocado. books to learn about nutrition. Okay, avocado meal is good for your health, okay? There's no eggs in here, so the cholesterol is not here, okay? The yellow egg and, the, and mayonnaise is bad for your health. He cut out seafood, meat, salt, sugary foods and drinks, white bread and starches. He eats egg whites and almond butter for protein. He eats vegetables and good fats and olive oil and avocados. He eats oatmeal and cinnamon and limits fruit. It takes sacrifice and dedication. This how I eat. You got to get used to eating it because it don't have, it don't taste like no poor boy salmon. For exercise, Reverend Brown started walking around City Park, gradually speeding up to what he calls a trot. 180 pounds came off. Yeah, His blood good. sugar is better controlled. My doctor say, wow, you amazing. It's amazing. It inspired me to lose weight because I was uh, wearing uh, a 22. Uh, I got off most of the meat, and now I am, believe it or not, I am in a 14. Yes, it works. His, his recipe works. LSU health, weight, and exercise expert, Dr. Melinda Southern, says people are successful in weight loss when they have an internal motivation, which was Reverend Brown's kidney health, and his external motivation was being on Weight Loss Wednesday. Having a goal like that and being accountable to another person is a great way to get yourself started on a weight loss program. Training his muscles and cutting sugar and starches out of his diet helps his metabolism and makes him not feel deprived. You're not gonna be as hungry if, you know, if, you, if you're eating the right kind of diet. When you're putting added sugar in your diet, remember it triggers hunger. How's your life changed since you lost all that weight? Well, uh, uh, people don't recognize me. They say, that's you? Brown, you don't look the same at all. I was that 400 pound where everybody looked at and wrote off. Look at me now. No doubt you've seen stunning before and after weight loss pictures of people on the keto diet. Well now, Tulane's director of nutrition, Dr. Diego Rose, has looked at the keto diet and several others in a different way. And keto was the least nutritious while having the greatest negative impact on the environment. We learned that there were big differences in terms of the carbon footprint, the, the impacts that uh, producing the foods to eat one of these diets, the impacts that that causes on the environment. And it was a lot greater than we expected. In fact, its carbon footprint was more than four times greater than the vegan diet, mostly due to methane gas emissions from cattle, which is 10 times the impact of chicken. So why was it the least nutritious? They tend to be high in saturated fats because there's a lot of uh, meat consumption. And they're not getting enough fruits and vegetables and that type of thing. Exactly. For one, fruits and vegetables are high in antioxidants, which may prevent cell damage that can lead to cancer and heart disease. The best for nutrition was a pescatarian diet. That's a vegetarian diet with seafood added, and one many people are already following now during Lent. And here's why vegetarian ranked better than vegan on nutrition. Folks that are eating a vegetarian diet are getting some dairy in their, in their diet. Part of the issue in, in the U.S. is that we, at least in terms of our recommendations, we under-consume dairy. We don't, we're not getting enough calcium, we're not getting enough uh, potassium and vitamin D. So as you consider both sides of this list, nutrition and impact on the environment, Dr. Rose has this advice. If they want to make a change to improve their health or to improve the environment, that's great. Um, and, but I think they, they also need to be nice to themselves. That you're not, don't, don't put yourself on uh, such a strict diet that you're not going to be able to, to keep it up.
Jeremy Perry is fit at 47. He weighs in at a lean 165 pounds and is off of high blood pressure and diabetes medications. But his journey here was difficult. Between work and not exercising and just doing whatever, eating whatever I want to eat, it piled up. At one time, his weight was nearly double, 320 pounds. That caused kidney failure. His wife was a match and gave Jeremy one of hers in 2009. At first, he was against it. I was more scared of her health than mine because we have kids. And, you know, I'll make sure at least she'd be here for them. The weight Jeremy lost in order to get the first kidney transplant crept back up. He was now on dialysis and needed another kidney transplant. But to qualify, he needed to lose weight again. We know their kidneys are going to do so much better when their bodies are healthier because it's not even just about the weight loss. It's about resolving their diabetes, their high blood pressure, and all the different metabolic diseases that they have. At some places, obese patients are denied transplant surgery. So kidney transplantation being a life-saving procedure, this is basically depriving that opportunity. So to give kidney transplant patients the best possible outcome, Tulane has a two-step process. First, stomach sleeve surgery was done by bariatric surgeon Dr. Shauna Levy to help Jeremy lose weight. It also helps regulate hunger hormones and metabolic illnesses. Then, when that's under control, Jeremy got a kidney transplant. It's like a double joy of excitement. Not only do you lose weight, but then you get a kidney and you're no longer on dialysis and your life is just free. Jeremy was highly motivated and took the opportunity as a challenge then took his health to a whole new level, working out and completely changing his diet. I will walk 14 miles a morning. Yes, I get on a levee, I will walk from the Gretna Ferry past the Elgis Ferry, actually to the old Drill and Smith and walk back. Even being chased by a wild coyote one morning for 10 minutes has not stopped him. At half the weight today, he is the picture of health and has a message to all who will listen. Take care of yourself. Try not to overindulge in food. And I have to learn it the whole way because I always took care of everybody else. So I had to take care of Jeremy now, finally. Think about increasing hormones at puberty. They completely change your body from straight to curvy. Hormones cause fat to go to the chest, hip, and buttocks areas. Now think about that in reverse. At menopause, the ovaries decrease production of hormones. Did you notice your body changing or gaining weight? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, yes. And I just started gaining weight, and my skin changed, you know, just like the comp body composition changing. At 54, Christy Cass is a busy, energetic entrepreneur and marketing director. But a few years ago, menopause made her miserable, body, mind, and spirit. I had no energy, no focus. I feel like I lost my brain, really. It was just flat. I was always a pair. I always had the, the bigger hips, bigger thighs, all of that. Never had a stomach. Holy cow, now I have a stomach. So Christy sought help from advanced gynecologist and hormone replacement expert, Dr. Stephanie Schultes. Mood changes, worsening of anxiety, worsening of depression, weight gain, and even in those people that are working out consistently, and that's very frustrating for them. Fatigue, uh, decrease in sex drive, decrease in sexual pleasure. Dr. Schultes says there are short-term and long-term effects to your health without your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Yes, the male hormone, all made by the ovaries. There's faster loss of bone, muscle, and brain, faster formation of plaque clogging the arteries. All the skin and genitals become more lax with more urinary infections. Fat accumulates in the dangerous area around the waist. It's the fat around the liver. It's the fat around the kidneys, the intestines. And that's very unhealthy fat. And we know that starts accumulating more with the lack of estrogen. And that leads to insulin insensitivity. And that leads to potentially fatty liver. She says estrogen improves your metabolism. And testosterone preserves your muscle and energy, all leading to burning more calories and not only having the energy to work out, 
but seeing results. A lot of studies are actually showing this now that you can't ignore the menopausal transition and the hormonal changes that occur um, as a time for significant weight gain for some women. Reintroducing estrogen back into a woman's life actually helps to stop that fat redistribution. Section head of Oxner Baptist OBGYN and hormone replacement expert Dr. Jennifer Brune says replacing testosterone is also important. Not only does it help their mood, and it helps a lot of times their marriage or their relationships, um, but it is going to increase their lean body mass. And by increasing your lean body mass, um, you're increasing your metabolic rates. The testosterone is the bomb, yeah. just saying. That first month I was like, Holy cow, girl on fire. Christy is back. Let's rock the world. Christy gets non oral, bioidentical HRT from Dr. Schultes, a tiny implant under the skin that slowly delivers hormones to her blood, just like her ovaries used to. She also treats men in andropause and says they see the same fat redistribution benefits from HRT. And Dr. Brune notes that the added benefit of HRT after menopause is hormones restore that drop in brain chemicals responsible for feeling pleasure, satisfaction, and motivation, making you feel like getting off the sofa and moving. Is it a cure-all? Is, is it, you know, nature's wonder medicine? No, but it definitely can assist women in achieving their weight loss goals. For Weight Loss Wednesday, I'm Meg Farris.